welcome to Fibertown. This is episode 235 and it's September 6th, 2019. My name is Emily and you're very welcome to my kitchen. Alice just came out. Uh, she's having a drink of water and we have some things to share. And when I say we, I mean me. Um, I think, you know, I've been striving for two podcasts a month, and I think I said that I was going to leave sewing projects out of the beginning of the month podcast. But I think that's a lie. I think I'm just going to have to talk about them as they happen. Otherwise, I'll forget, and I don't want to not share them. So I will save them for the end. So what else do we have to talk about? We have... Um, some works in progress, spinning, dyeing, and sort of a crossover of so many crafts project, and then sewing at the end. So, uh, thank you so much if you are one of the delightful people that left a message or pressed like on this video. That means you're awesome. If you didn't get a chance to do those things, that's fine. I'm just happy you're here, spending some time, um, so thank you either way. We do have a knit-along still going on, and actually we've got about a month left. It's the Wallen-along, hashtag Marie Wallen Cal, and my work in progress is still my project for that. So let's just get into it. Um, this is the Yell sweater. I've got it in a lovely woolly thistle bag. This has just been, I have not had a lot of knitting time, and what knitting time I do have has been on this. There have been days when I've knit maybe fewer than 100 stitches lately. It's been very busy, um, which I do not like, but it's kind of the nature of the beginning of a school year. So I look forward to more cool, calm weather like today, where it's kind of overcast and cooler. Or I can settle in and knit. But I've, yeah, here's what we have so far. <laughs> Let me show you. Um, this is knit out of Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift, two ply Spindrift. Um, I feel like it's useful to talk about the Jameson's yarns as, since they're two different companies, they can be confusing because they both have Jameson in the name. I'm going to call it Spindrift and two ply jumper weight. This is out of Spindrift which has magnificent colors. So I think, oh God, I, I, I don't remember where I was last time, but I'm making faster progress on the main body now that I'm trusting in the color contrast. I think it really slowed me down. All those doubting thoughts really slowed down my knitting before, but it's clearly, it works and it's awesome. So I have, here is the beginning of, one of the arms, no, no, that's not the arm steak. Where is an arm steak? Here's one. I do have two of them because I have two arms. It's about five inches tall, the steak, and the steak needs to be about eight inches before I can start finishing the body of the sweater. And then I cut it open, and then I make sleeves, and yeah, hopefully it'll go quickly when I get there. No, I'm not letting you out. None of that. So really I just need to finish one more main chart repeat and I should be ready to start finishing the top. Doing the shoulders as it were. So there's the yell. I'm in love with it and I feel like I need to buckle down. I need to buckle down on this sweater. Sadly I will not be going to Rhinebeck I, I will not be there to see any potential Marie Wallen sweaters, but I hope you send me pictures and um, tag me on Instagram, where I am Fibertown with an RE. So the other work in progress is just a humble sock. This is the second sock of maybe a Patton's sock yarn. I'm not sure. It was a gift, and I don't think the ball band that was on it is accurate. So it's my usual sock recipe, one and a half millimeter needles, and nothing more exciting than that. Um, hi, you want to come say hello? My goodness, you're sweet today. She's been taking naps because, you know, it's fall weather and it's therefore nap weather. 
So that's it. That's what I'm working on. This sweater has been all consuming really. And um, I feel like I've been in a bit of a funny place knitting mojo wise. Like I want to knit on it. And I have other projects in the back of my head, but nothing's really getting my motor running knitting wise. I'm not not wanting to knit, but I feel like I have so many, I hope you didn't hear that. Boston Terriers are gassy dogs. I'm blaming the dog. Anyway, I have a lot of other crafts that are getting my motor running and I'm craving delving into them, so that's okay. I know that knitting will always come back. Uh, so the next thing I have to share with you is spinning. And I have, I have spent a lot of time spinning lately and I finished a fleece spin. So let me share. Oh my goodness. I need to give all of this a bath. This is a Clun Forest fleece from Maryland. I bought this fleece at, um, Maryland Sheep and Wool maybe two years ago. I'm going to start writing the year of the festival on the, um, on the, Fleece information. I got this mug a few years ago from an amazing viewer. And everybody loves it in our house. I like to drink water out of it. Also pickle jars. You knew that about me. Clun Forest. It needs a wash. You can see there's some twisty energy, especially in this one skein. Every, everybody else is pretty calm. Look at this guy. This was such a fun spin. I didn't really stress about consistency. And it was just very pleasant. Um, I have about a thousand, just under a thousand yards of the plain white. It's a two ply. It smells really good. Sheepy, sheepy, sheepy. And then, of course, I've shown you some of these. These are smaller skeins that I plant dyed using marigolds. Fresh indigo one dip, which it's a very pale mint. You can see it a little bit better there. Fresh indigo double dip and weld everything from my garden. The weld, I really love the weld and my understanding of the weld plant is that, well, right now I'm just thinking, there are caterpillars eating my weld. They really think it's tasty. Um, it's a perennial, and from what I've read, this is the first year I've had it. That's the year when you can use the leaves to die. The second year of the plant life, um, it'll set seed, and you can use that seed for obviously more plants, but you cannot use the leaves to die. That's what it says in the source that I have. It's a bit of a bummer. But, oh yes. So, I'm thinking a colorwork sweater of some sort. I really will have to swatch and see what this gauge comes out, how it comes out. I, I, I'm sure it will vary through the fabric just because the yarn is a two-ply that's quite inconsistent. Um, I really think it's lovely. It's lofty. I spun it very woolen. It was a woolen prep. I made bats on my drum carter and then I spun it with plenty of air. Oops, sorry. So I think the white yarn, hi baby, you want to come up? Hang on. I think the white yarn is going to be dyed with acorns. You stay, you wait. I have a stand of oak trees in front of my house and this book, Wild Color, um, yeah, these are the colors you can get from the galls, which is basically a parasitic growth where sort of a wasp causes the tree to do that. But look, some colors you can get with acorns. I'm very interested in this one, which I think might have an iron modifier. I think a brown sweater or even like that or that even would be great with these colors. I like brown sweaters. So, oh, you've moved. Don't sit on that. It's not for your booty to sit on. Come here. Oh my gosh. Oh. oh, little mommy. This is my cat dog. She's very warm. Where have you been napping? There's no sunspot. Have you been under blankets? 
Just a little hibernator. So that is what I've got going. Oh, yes, that's what I've got going on spinning wise. And now I need to I need to wash my Hog Island fleece that I got at this year's Maryland. I haven't even opened the bag since I bought it. It's a pretty grimy fleece too. <laughs> so yeah, maybe this weekend I'll start washing it. I have baskets now that have been freed up from my Jacob and from my Clint Forest. Hey, you're very smelly. Why don't you get down? No kisses, no kisses. What do you think that's about? Hey, look up here at least. Look. So, she was just laying down on my, some woolly work that I've been doing, which is not cool, Alice. All right, so I think I'm gonna start working on this. This is a Coopworth fleece that is super gorgeous. Um, the other option is, this is this one. It's a Perindale cross, I think. Maybe it's just Perindale. I think this guy is going to get worked on. I'm going to comb these. And there's still a bit of lanolin in here. I think I'm going to, what I'm going to do is put a heating pad on the locks I'm about to comb. And that will sort of liquefy the lanolin a bit. It should be a little easier to work with then. Uh, and I think that's actually the perfect yarn for a Siri cardigan, or perfect wool, perfect color, perfect luster. Um, this is about five inches staple length. So that's the plan there. I had thought I was going to use my old Centrum maybe for a Siri, but I have two colors and I think I want to make the Ten Show pullover. That was the yarn I asked for um, opinions for patterns. Someone said Ten Show and I was like, yes, it's gorgeous. T E N S H O by Beatrice Perrin Dolan. You like this, boo boo? So I have to get you down because I have to show some Coopworth yarn that I dyed. I dyed it with marigolds and just a few Coreopsis thrown in there. Oh my gosh, it came out so yellow. Do you like this tone of voice? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this yarn is super yellow. It's Coopworth yarn from Solitude Wool, which is a local concern to me. I say concern because they acquire mid-atlantic local and mid-atlantic wool and have it spun into breed specific yarn i love this coopworth and it's a sport weight i've got a sweater quantity it's maybe 350 yards times four whoa super i mean it'd make a very sunny pullover or sweater okay you're getting down bye So I don't know if I want this to stay this color. Now I forgot about this as it was drying and I left it out in the sun. You can see that it really does fade. Like any anything that's dyed would if you left it out in the sun for hours. But I think putting it in an indigo bath, and this was actually proposed by Solitude when I tagged them in my Instagram post. They're like, gorgeous color. If you want green, maybe you should put it in indigo because yellow and blue make green. So I think this is going to sit in my stash, this color, like as this color for a while. And I dyed a little bit of two-ply yarn I had just left over. Threw that in the bath as well and didn't take the color. It's quite like this. But what would happen if I did a fresh indigo bath? I don't think I have enough fresh indigo, frankly, to make a big difference. But I'm curious, so I might try a little fresh indigo on this guy to see what happens. Maybe extrapolate results. Maybe I'll cut little bits of this one and put it in. So just, just thoughts and ideas. Because green, green sweaters are also my thing. Um, what else do I have to share with you? Well have my crossover project. I'm calling this my crossover project because as I was trying to think about where to put this in the lineup of things today, um, oh and I actually also dyed some fleece 
This is Hilda from Serenity Farm. She's a Corydale U. I put her in the leftover marigold bath, and um, I'll eventually card this up with some Hilda that I put in a fresh indigo bath. Let's see what happens. I have a, a huge quantity of Hilda already spun up into yarn that that will be something amazing someday when I find the right project for it. So the crossover, the crossover. You're on my crossover project again. That's because it's wool and <sighs> she's a wool loving dog. I cannot fault her for this. All right, move your booty. Thank you. Move, 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 thank you. This is, <laughs> don't know why I'm laughing about it. This is my fleece to jacket project. You guys know about this project, right? Icelandic fleece, bought at Rhinebeck, washed, carded with the tog and the fell together. Washed, carded, spun, dyed, woven, dyed again. As well, that is this part right here. As well as the sleeves, which are a blend of, I think, Gotland and um, Border Leicester Cross. So then it's all been cut up and sort of franken pieced. This is the Verona Jacket by Tasudi Patterns. You can tell that I took, I made a bit of a jigsaw puzzle out of the back because my hand woven fabric is narrow and it actually came out fine. Just, it's kind of interesting, right? In the back, I had, instead of just one piece cut on the fold, I've got two pieces here. And this color is not at all what it is in real life. This is the strangest looking color. This is not what it looks like either. But ignore the color. It's got a beautiful blue clay texture. You can probably see that. Because of the tog and fell being woven together. So two pieces here and one, two, three pieces here. Now the Verona jacket is meant to be out of boiled wool with the seams on the outside and sort of exposed. I chose not to do that. I chose to keep my seams on the inside. And I used my Taylor's clapper quite a bit to um, sort of to put on the seam as after I pressed it to maintain the heat so that it would the seams would stay open better. Um, so the jacket, I also did a little Franken piecing right there. Where else? The seams line up really nicely. The fronts are just cut as is. So yeah, the collar I had to piece and the back I had to piece. Now I haven't finished the sleeve hems and that is because, actually, I actually haven't put this on since I made it. They're really weird. They're short and like if I hem these even more, oh my gosh. So this is the jacket on me. And I have to say, maybe I was biased when I made it because it was a million degrees outside. I don't even know if you can see this. But it's just kind of weird looking. It does have darts up here. I guess these are like um, French darts. It's also scratchy. And uh, let's see, yeah, I think it's supposed to. So I could either have a sinking feeling of failure because so much work has gone into this, or it's a learning curve with, with some successes, right? Because a learning curve is always a valuable. And I don't look like I mean that, but I really do mean that. I just wish the sleeves were longer because it's a wool jacket. What's the point in having bare elbows? 
But I do have to decide what to do with these cuffs because this, the sleeve fabric, frays. It is, no matter how many times I washed it in hot water, tumble dried, it would not felt all the way. It is fold, definitely, but yeah, it's just super heavy and it doesn't really drape, especially when I sit down, goodness. You know how I feel about sitting down clothes and standing up clothes. If you can get a garment that does both well, that's a win. It's just pretty bulky. Like, my shoulders look... I I'm not going to overthink it. It is what it is. Whew, that's a lot cooler. So, I don't know. If you have any thoughts about the cuffs, I don't have any more wool. Um... I could pick up and like knit some cuffs. That might be a good idea. I mean, this yarn could do that. <laughs> uh, the dye job is different, different parts of it. Let's just call it interesting. Interesting project. But, so see what I mean about crossover? It's like everything I enjoy doing. wool, spinning, dyeing, weaving, sewing. I've sewn some other things as well. And the first one is this Misty cardigan, which I, I rescued this fabric from a, another failed make. And I have to say, this is not an entirely successful make. I like, I've made the Ogden cami before and I find that it's just, it. I can't use it in my wardrobe because I feel very exposed. And I have no issue with showing my boobs. In my work though, it's probably best that I don't. So, um, you know, when I, when I mean show my boobs, I'm not saying I'm going to flash anybody. Sometimes I talk and things just don't come out right. I meant cleavage. I meant décolleté. But... I feel like the Misty Cami does a little bit, gives a little more coverage. This is a cotton voile, which incidentally, I love the way it's cotton smells sometimes when you press it, especially voile and um, lawn. So this is a pattern, a new pattern. I think it's the first pattern by, is it So Altered Style? And at least one of the women in that company is uh, local, um, local to me. So it's kind of fun to support them. And I think this pattern has possibilities. Um, I think everyone has, to, and it has a dress version as well. I like the back. And it has multiple ways to configure this. Um, many, many ways. The facing, I think next time I might try just bias binding, to tell you the truth. But the main issue is this. The width of the strap doesn't match the width here. And I don't know if maybe I, I think it's my, I've probably misinterpreted or misread something. And it's like that on both sides. So, I don't know. Maybe I folded down the strap too much, like too narrow, too narrow a width. But I will revisit that, and um, I think it has potential to be a good wardrobe piece. The second thing I made, and I think, <laughs> now I understand. So I'm sitting here, and this is too much information, but I'm like, did I put on deodorant today? And I, I'm having to stop myself from smelling my armpits. No, it's this shirt that has been worn already by my husband for probably a 12-hour work day. Um, this is the Fairfield, sorry. This is the Fairfield button-up by Thread Theory, and I made him a really amazing shirt, if I do say so myself. It is not without its issues. Um, the plackets are a little bit, he rolled up the sleeves, the plackets are not perfect. But at least I did them on the right side of the sleeve this time. See the plackets right there? Um, yeah, the stitching isn't perfect. But, well, 
else was I going to say? The pocket. You see it there? There it is. Right there. I'm very proud of the way I matched up these horizontal stripes. It's very, here, I'll just show you the back. You can see them better. Maybe I'll put in a picture of him wearing it. So it's this brown paisley with black accents, and you can see here, stripe, 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 stripe. So they all match in the front. Sadly, not too terribly well on the sides. There's a little bit décalé, a little bit offset. Um, but in the front, when it's buttoned up, they match. So I am pleased with my work there. A strange thing happened with this fabric, which I got at Fabric Place Basement um, in Alexandria, Virginia, which is an amazing store. But the thing that happened was, uh, as I was doing the last cuff, I noticed, and I have it here for you, I just had to take it off. It started to, sh the fabric started to shred. And I actually tried to put some fray checks. See that right there? How weird is that? Yeah, that it was not the greatest top stitching either. But I was like, what? And then as I, I said, I have to redo this cuff. So I started to take the cuff off and the fabric above the cuff also had a hole in it. So I had to fold that over twice to provide a stable non-shredded fabric to attach the next cuff, which meant <laughs> that that sleeve was maybe a half inch shorter than it should have been. So I actually had to make the second cuff a half inch like deeper. See how deep that cuff is compared to this one? Yeah. Let's see. It ended up being more like an inch. There they are. Cuff. Huge cuff. Regular cuff. You really don't notice if there's so much going on with the fabric. When the shirt is on, you just don't notice it. But then, as I was sewing on buttons, to my horror, I found on, and I thought maybe it was my buttonholer foot because I did forget to put the feed dogs down. But nowhere else were the buttonholes a problem. And then, in the middle of the sleeve, there was a hole, which I have tried to repair. Put a bit of fabric underneath this hole. You can see right there, right? Where I stitched it. Put some zigzags in there. There was a hole. So I have no idea. This thing needs to get washed. But I'm just crossing my fingers that it doesn't shred in the wash. I'll keep you posted. It was a very fine Italian lawn. And Jaime says that it was like wearing a cloud. It's super light and just delightful fabric, but incredibly fragile, perhaps. Or faulty? Seems more like it to me. So the last thing I have for you today is another sewing piece. I'm just smiling because I finished this today. And you know what? I'm going to pause and put it on and show you. I'm going to redo my hair. This is another Cielo Cielo top, and it's not been pressed. And I have a lot of strings hanging off still, but I'm thrilled with this. So this is more than meets the eye. Let me explain. This is a closet case pattern, and I didn't do sleeve cuffs as she has you do them, but this is a piece of fabric I had in my stash that should be a, um, a shawl. It's a cantha which is spelled C-A-N-T-H-A, and I've been told by some um, friends from India that it's pronounced Kantha. <laughs> That's the emphasis. So, uh, and it smells like cotton, cotton fabric that's been pressed. So this is, Kantha has hand, vertical hand stitching that usually quilts to, um, what's it called? Two layers of fabric together. So this piece right here, I love that it's got these vertical elements and then a horizontal one, which I was worried that this would be weird, but I think placement wise, but I think it works. I think I like it. And then I've got a little bit down here as well. And you may have gotten a sneak peek because this baby's reversible. 
Yeah, the sleeves need some pressing along the seams. Um, so let me pause again, and I'll show you the other side. Ta-da! So this is the reverse, and this is a patchwork, obviously. This is all hand stitched together, and then I machines, I cut it up and then machine stitched it, obviously. Um, here's the back, a little more neutral. Um, I didn't really plan the placement of the pieces. I just cut where I could cut to make this shawl actually into a top. And the reason I cut it up is because I, I'm just not going to wear this. It's not functional as a shawl for me. But as a top, it's super functional. And I love it. Um, so I think kantha can also be like these. I've seen them also where it's like, stitched in spirals, so I don't know that the vertical thing is a rule. In fact, I need to probably find out more about this entire subject. But I love it. I love it. Um, it's not perfect. It's got a mixture of different thread colors in it, but again, um, it's very colorful, colorful anyway. And the, the vertical threads are blue and red. I love both sides equally, I think. So because you have seam allowances on the wrong side, which should be the wrong side, you need to finish in a particular way. I was like, you could do French seams, but I was thinking I would have to, they'd have to be tiny or I'd have to stitch them down, like fell them anyway. So I kind of did flat felled seams everywhere. Don't, no, no, you may not scratch that. So this is probably not cat or dog friendly to wear. Anyway, she's trying to scratch my, my lap. I adore it. I really adore it. So, yeah, so it's um, sort of, uh, I'm full of French words today, coup de coeur. It was like, I loved it, so I bought it. That's why I bought that shawl. But then I realized, I was like, oh, this will look great with a little black dress out on the town. I don't go out on the town anymore, at least not at this point in my life. I have hopes for some time, but this is what I can wear now, and I really love it. Really, really love it. So that's all I have for you today. Hopefully this is well under 45 minutes, um, and you guys have enjoyed it. I have enjoyed being with you. So has Alice, and we hope you're doing well, and that you will take care until we see you next time, sometime after Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival. Bye.